Tip number one, lower the DPI. Setting a higher DPI means a higher quality image, right? Well, yeah, in the digital world that's true, however, in the material world, there's a point of diminishing returns, especially when laser engraving wood. Wood as a softer organic material needs a little room for the engraved lines to breathe, compared to a material with a hard and even surface like metal. Try experimenting in the 190 to 254 DPI range if you aren't getting the results you want using a higher DPI. This is especially true if your engravings are coming out way too dark or with muddy details. Tip number two, better grain orientation. If possible, engrave against the grain of your wood. Sometimes this is unavoidable due to the material and design constraints, but if you can, have the grain pattern going up and down through your image. A horizontal grain pattern can visually interfere with the subject of your image, especially if you're working with a wood type that has a more pronounced grain. Tip number three, remove or edit the background. This tip does require access to a photo editing program like Photoshop or GIMP, but will really up the quality of your engravings. Removing the background from your image helps the subject stand out and really be the star of the show. You see this a lot in products like memorial plaques and headstones. If the background isn't important to your image, get rid of it. Even if you do want to keep the background for your engraving, being able to separate the two during editing allows you to adjust each to optimal levels. This is especially useful if you have a dark subject and a light background or vice versa. Extreme swings and tones like that are really hard to get right for wood engraving without some more precise editing. Tip number four, wood choice matters. Not all wood is created equal for photo laser engraving. Ideally, you wanna use wood that is, number one, a pale color. Remember, the bare wood is going to be the white in your photograph. The closer to white you can get, the nicer the contrast will be. Number two, minimal grain pattern and flaws. Variations in grain patterns and things like knots are gonna show themselves in your image. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable. So try to find a piece of wood with as clean and minimal grain surface as possible. Number three, higher resin content equals good. Wood with a high resin content is great for laser engraving because when the laser hits, it leaves a nice dark image. And we want that because the name of the game when engraving on wood is trying to develop as much balanced contrast between the wood surface and our burn marks as possible. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find a piece of wood that has all of these characteristics, but some of the best species for engraving are alder, cherry, and maple. For a more affordable and available option, I like to use basswood, pine is okay, and Baltic birch is my least favorite. Here's a quick look at three wood examples. First is a basswood plaque. It has a nice light wood color with minimal grain pattern. Next up is Baltic birch plywood. This has a more pronounced grain pattern and a slight yellowish tint to it. Last, this is a red alder plaque. Much darker wood color, more pronounced grain. However, the tight and finished surface will produce a really nice dark engraving. Tip number five, image source matters. Look, the best engravings are gonna come from the best photo sources and it's as simple as that. A professionally shot raw photo with a perfect focus is always gonna look better than an over-compressed JPEG you took with your iPhone 4 10 years ago. If all you have is a crappy low-res digital photo, try running it through one of those AI photo enhancers first to see if it can give you a better starting point. If you're scanning a physical image into your computer, make sure to scan at a high DPI, which you can reduce later. Tip number six, slow and low. The natural tendency is to want to engrave at a fast speed and then need to boost the power to compensate. However, when working with a material like wood, I find that lowering the power and lowering the speed often gives a much nicer result. I rarely ever go near 100 millimeters a second when engraving photos. I'd personally rather take a little longer to finish with a nicer result. Remember, photo engraving is about finesse, not power. Tip number seven, air assist on. I don't particularly want hot vaporized wood particles landing on the surface of my nice photo work. Simple as that. If you don't have an air assist and you have a couple extra bucks to spend, pick up the model for your laser. It will greatly improve your work. It also cuts down on the cleanup time after you're done. Tip number eight, fine tuning details. Let's say you just ran your material test and a roster fill interval test if you're using light burn and you think you've picked the power and speed settings that you like. Image mask the focal point of the photo or a spot with the most dynamic range from light to dark. Copy and paste this to new layers and fine tune your settings from there. If you're using ImageR, you can run this in tandem with the DPI test to really dial it in. 
I do this because there have been plenty of times I ran a job with the settings I got from a standard material test and it didn't come out as expected. Those first level tests are usually fine for standard vector engravings, but roster photos are a different beast. Tip number nine, better magnets. Most of the thin pieces of craft wood you buy don't lie flat and that's a big issue when laser engraving. We need a nice flat surface to keep the material in focus. Just head over to Home Depot and pick up a package of neodymium magnets to help keep your corners lie flat against your honeycomb. These magnets are way stronger than the glorified fridge magnets that might have come with your honeycomb bed. Strong magnets also make sure that your wood doesn't shift while running your job. Tip number 10, gamma correction is your best friend. If you're finding that no matter what you do, your engravings are still coming out too dark or too light, try adjusting your gamma first. Gamma correction for dithered images works by either increasing or decreasing the space between the dark and light pixels in your image. If your image is too dark, try increasing the gamma to lighten it. If your image is too washed out, try decreasing it. Gamma correction is great because you get to make these adjustments without blowing out the highlights or getting engulfed in shadows like you would by just moving the contrast and brightness sliders by themselves. Here's a quick look at two photo projects I did for this video. Both of these were done on my Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt laser. If you're looking to pick one of these up, there's a link in the video description below. My goal for this dog photo was to make sure I brought out enough detail in the fur and in the dark areas of the nose. It's really easy for those areas to get completely washed out. Second photo, again, I really focused on the darker areas, especially around the eyes to make sure I brought out enough detail and depth to make the photo look realistic.